Welcome back. Today, I'm gonna to be reviewing a piece of equipment that has brought me so much joy working in my field as a, as a creative because it is such a fearlessly creative tool. Um, and having worked with a lot of microphones, like more on the budget side, a lot of them can be obstructions to your creativity and to the work you're trying to do and not so much like a tool or a catalyst for incredible work. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get right to it. The microphone that I will be reviewing today is the Blue Kiwi, which looks a little something like this, which is to say, in a word, beautiful. It is a enormous green, large diaphragm, FET condenser microphone. I came across this mic originally when um, I had a little bit of money saved up and I wanted to buy a large diaphragm condenser microphone suited for vocals because that's a lot of what I work with is mainly vocal recording, males, females, hip hop, R&B, some voiceover, spoken word stuff as well. So I really wanted to get something that could cover all of those bases really well without having to exceed the $1,200 price point. The one microphone namely that I think was on my hit list for a long time and it was a mic that I really like lusted over for many many years is the is the Neumann U87. A benchmark standard vocal recording microphone. Unfortunately because they are so sought after even the reissue falls at about the $2,200 uh, price point if not like 2400 and if you're looking for an original like vintage Neumann U87, 2800 to like $3,500 for a microphone that you'll probably have to service anyway, an older microphone, you typically want to have somebody check it out to make sure that there's no perforations on the capsule, the capsule hasn't gotten oxidized or that there isn't like an impermeable nicotine layer from uh, these hip hop studios, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I came across the Blue Kiwi. This is a microphone that I thought was, I thought it was around like $2,000, which it is factory new. I found mine on Reverb for $950. I immediately started like doing a little bit of research. I started looking up microphone shootouts in which the Kiwi was included. And I started looking up other reviews. It's, it's really hard to gauge like the usefulness of a piece of equipment if it's being used under completely different circumstances than yours. It's unlikely that, that, that you will receive the those same types of results in like a project studio, you know, it's just an unrealistic set of expectations. So I sort of extrapolated what I could from those reviews and um, and I just decided to take a leap of faith and just get it and see see what happened. Fortunately, it was uh, it was absolutely incredible. What I came to find that is absolutely my favorite thing about the Kiwi is that it maintains this sort of like chameleonic behavior, this sort of like spongy characteristic where it soaks up the character of every other piece of equipment in the signal chain tremendously well. So for example, one of my favorite preamps to use with the uh, with the Blue Kiwi is the Neve 1073. The 1073 can be described as very full range, very lush, very robust, and it turns the blue into that sort of range of characteristics. It feels very tough with a lot of like a lot of chest and a lot of stomach and it has tremendous dynamic range with an absolutely beautiful upper mid range all the way past 10 and 20k. Repair us lay in the pool, play in the waves, a pyramid broken down to a mule. Soon we will face the many face, rubber your palm and silk, head to the east, opposite side of a mother's kill. And if you turn right around and use like a very clean preamp, like in my specific example would be like a John Hardy M1. We'll climb the mountain babe. We're living on top of the world. We can run it all the time. It absorbs that clean, clear characteristic. So it makes the process of diagnosing vocalists um, before you get started kind of a kind of a pleasure. It's it's very much a breeze. Like you can just sort of take these um, take these inferences from just speaking to someone that you're about to record. Start to build up this little checklist in your head. They've got like a thin sounding voice, so I might want to pair the Kiwi up with like a more robust sounding preamp, or maybe they're a touch sibilant. So I would want to go with a preamp that doesn't exaggerate the top end too much. On the uh, on the body of the microphone itself, they omitted any pad or phase switches to keep noise floor down and to make sure that there weren't any like phase incoherencies in the in the topology but they did include this neat little uh, rotary switch right here which dials up to nine different polar patterns uh, the main ones being cardioid figure eight and omni and it lets you dial in between them when I'm working in a booth I find that proximal frequencies can oftentimes get a little bit exaggerated so what I'll do is I'll just flip the rotary dial one or two notches over to omni which as some of you know does not exaggerate the uh, the, the proximity effect, whatever puffiness, whatever pillowy, muffly kind of frequencies I was getting, or just sort of recede and step back a little bit more. I don't really think that people look at blue as a synonym for fantastic 
large diaphragm vocal microphone. But I was absolutely, and am still absolutely blown away at how flexible this microphone is on a wide range of vocalists, male, female, across genres. It is truly a pleasure to work with. One thing I've noticed about the Kiwi is that it just feels very, 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 very sturdy. When you take a microphone such as the Manly Reference, which is a, a tube condenser microphone, what I've noticed is that if you have a highly dynamic vocalist, someone that goes from being very quiet to being very loud, the Manly has like this sort of give to it where you can feel the vocalist kind of recede into the sound stage a little bit, almost like a natural compressed kind of tone. And this can be very, very nice for vocalists that have a lot of control. However, if you have a vocalist that isn't so trained, this can be a nightmare. They might be getting too close during a loud section, which will cause the microphone to absolutely fold. Whenever someone gets loud, I still feel them right there. They just don't move. And it's uh, especially just for hip hop where you just want to get like this very clear image of the vocalist and sort of enhance it from there. You don't really want to have to do all of this uh, auxiliary sort of like work to just get it to get it to fit where you want it to. It just sort of does that. Another thing that I really like about it is that um, it feels very what's what some people would consider to be like fast. It has an extremely prehensile um, transient response, which is awesome for recording uh, ad libs, mainly ad libs for hip hop, where they're doing a lot of like these short bursts of energetic sound and tone. And I find that it just captures every little tiny fluctuation, every little tiny burst of energy G tone, sound, whatever, perfectly fits it in the sound stage wherever it needs to go. Let's get a little bit of tungsten in here to let everyone know there's a noob on this set. <laughs> so, okay, I'm an independent musician. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of my recording in unideal scenarios like a bouncy room or, you know, in my home, however I can with a couch behind me or something like that. Why should I get this microphone? Go ahead. If you are going to try to purchase a, um, a, a large diaphragm microphone to like record vocals with uh, at any capacity, I think you should get something that, that you can kind of grow with and you can kind of learn a little bit more as you go. I find that this mic would be just as at home in a project studio as it would in like a real deal, you know, recording environment. Obviously this thing isn't going to fix bad rooms. It's not going to fix non-viable acoustic uh, situations. But once you do start to like treat those things, I think this thing will give you a, like a lot of mileage in a, in a home environment. Would you say that if, you know, even if I've got a bad room and I'm not expecting my mic to fix it per se, mm -hmm. but like, let's say that I just want something that's gonna give me my best foot forward. It's like, yeah. yeah, 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 That's Absolutely. right here. Mm -hmm. And would you say like, this is the cheapest that still maintains the quality you would expect when upgrading to a mic of this caliber. One of the only other microphones that I would say could befit that in in that price point would be the would be the C414. What I find that the C414 lacks in comparison to the Blue is just uh, this character and this sort of like virtuosity in all of these different fields where I'm looking for I'm looking for something that responds to my other equipment really well and isn't stubborn in that way. It doesn't retain its own character in in a, in a stubborn way. It's What's sort of, an example of that? A really good example would be actually in my opinion, or in my experience rather, would be the Neumann U87 AI. Did I do have one of those. I do have one of those. Right. Yeah, we're gonna yeah we're gonna do that pretty soon. Um, so <laughs> with the with the U87 in particular, it is sought after because of its own character. You know, so it's almost like the other way around. It's almost like you're picking preamps that are supporting the microphone's character. Whereas I, I tend to think the other way around. I sort of diagnose my vocalist. I see what's going on with their voice. I see what's going on with their aptitude as a performing artist in the studio. I see what's going on with their performance, and then I sort of attach the blue to it as this sort of like buffer between the vocalist and other pieces of equipment and how I know other pieces of equipment to respond. And when I start chaining things together based on the vocalist characteristic, I find that I get something that is a little bit more tailored, a little bit more fit. When should I get something like this? I have a, like, let's say I'm an independent musician. I have a blue Yeti. Ugh. What? Definitely. Wait, when, why do I need this? I think when you're ready to start getting home recordings that you would feel confident in sending off to a mixing engineer. Um, and the mixing engineer will be like, able to do more with it because yeah, I have this? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Do you record with this in unideal scenarios? I have indeed in the past. And it's actually it's really cool because like whenever I find myself in an unideal scenario, I actually try to make that a part of the experience almost like in the in the recording. Because recording, you know, to me is like the art of preservation. You're preserving you're preserving a moment. If in that moment you aren't at Abbey Road or you aren't at, you know, Electric Lady, be honest about it, you know? Right. I think there's a certain, there's a certain type of like uh, candor and bravery that like goes into being honest about where you are 
and in, in within preserving a moment, but being very forward about it and sort of being a little bit more emblematic. I move it around, put it in different parts of the room, have the vocalist get closer, get farther away, angle it. This is a precise like measurement tool. You know, this is a very sensitive instrument and, and you'll come to find like, even if you just put headphones on and stand in front of it and start, you know, making sibilant sounds, make plosive sounds, speak, speak loudly, speak softly in a low voice, in a high voice and move around, experiment with it, you know? I yell at microphones, mm -hmm. as you know, uh, as a soul singer or like if you're a rock singer or a screamo mm -hmm. singer, like what benefit does this provide us? Really high, really high headroom. Yeah. Yeah. Enormous, enormous dynamic range, enormous headroom. Um, also the fact that it is, uh, it is not a tube microphone. So you don't run the risk of like driving a tube and getting a little too much color on the way. And it's a, it's a FET, uh, field effect transistor. So it's just like very, very clean. What can I use it for besides recording my vocal? Um, I've used it on, on guitar cabinets. I've used it on drums, like a, a drum room. I've used it to reamp vocals. Like I've sent a vocal to the, to the speaker of like these trashy little, uh, vinyl record players that you can buy at Urban Out. For yeah, like, I saw that. For like 50 bucks? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, right. So like I, I uh, got like the room ambience of like of that with this on, on Omni. Um, and one thing that I did with this that I that I really like is that I uh, I used to have a Teenage Engineering OP1 pocket synthesizer. And instead of going line in, I actually just mic'd the speaker. <laughs> so I just put the microphone like really, really close and sort of like uh, I took advantage of like the proximity effect. Just put it really, really close and got like a really nice like bass synth tone out of it. That's dope. Yeah. Okay. So it's not just for vocals. What do you like about this? more than the 87 uh female vocals yeah mainly. yeah female vocals i find that this thing like just kills it every time you know now pale in comparison to who you think i am you always want to talk it though i'm okay i always have to comfort you every day Wow. It, it has rarely If you're let a me lady, down. this is the jam. This is uh, it for you. Mainly like female singers. Um, if, Why is that? I've, I don't know. It has, well, for one, it has like a, it has like a nice lift in the top end, but that's um, like, I don't know. That's not really like a good, that's not really like a good reason why. Could you explain you know? like what it is about the female vocal that you capture with this thing that you really like? It felt, it just felt like a very, uh, a very accurate reproduction of what I hear when I have them sing to me in the room. Okay. Um, whereas like the U87 is, is very like mid range focused. I think it has like a weightiness to it while this thing feels very like light, just feels very breezy. So this is the blue kiwi. Kiwi. Yeah. What a cute name. I know. And you can probably pick one up for around seven hundred fifty, eight hundred fifty dollars on Reverb. This is all information I sourced myself. He had nothing to do with it. And so if you want to win one of these, we're giving one away. All you got to do is create a unified theory that incorporates quantum physics and regular physics and gravity. And if you can prove that theory with experimentation that proves out your hypothesis, then you can win this microphone. Other than that, you can just pick one up. It's not too expensive if you're getting serious about your vocals. <laughs> With that said, I've been Circo for Full Stack Creative. And I've been Ignacio from Full Stack Creative. If you like this review, please like the video, subscribe, ring the bell, bell. drop a comment, share it on Facebook. I was waiting and, for the bell. Uh, you gotta kill, you have to kill. Kill your demons? Kill your demons. Right, kill your vices. And have a great day Right. As yeah. well. That's, that's one you don't wanna forget. Yeah, of course. Um, and we will see you next time on Full Stack Creative. <laughs> One, 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 two, one, one, two, 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 one, two,